Today I'm going to start working on the sound hole ring for a baritone steel string guitar. I've got a plan for a fairly understated rosette. Um, it's going to be just a, a central ring of some figured wood surrounded by several layers of uh, various colors of purfling. For the ring itself, I haven't decided yet, but I'm either going to use this piece of madrone or this piece of spalted maple. I can see pretty clearly what the maple looks like already, but the madrone I won't be too sure of until I cut into it and, and see how it looks under the surface, which is oxidized from sitting on my shelf for 20 years. So, first step is to cut into that. So the madrone looks pretty interesting, cut open. Um, so now I really I have to decide between that and this spalted maple for the sound hole ring. I think they both look great. So probably it'll just come down to flipping a coin. Well, I decided to go with the madrone. I didn't do a coin flip. But I, I chose the Madrone mostly because I don't see it used very often in rosettes, and I think it looks pretty cool. So I took the piece that I cut on the bandsaw and sanded it down to a little over two millimeters thick. And now I'm going to cut out a ring from it and inlay that into the spruce soundboard. Okay, Let's see how this looks. So, just have to be careful in lifting off it, be careful lifting the, the ring off with the double sided tape because this wood is really soft and I could easily break it, ah, like that, with the, while I'm lifting it, but of course it can all be glued back together. Okay, so here's the ring. I have to clean up the edges, but this will be the beginning of the rosette. So I glued that little break in the rosette that happened when I was taking the tape off. It will not be at all visible in the finished guitar. And now I've marked an arc on the inside and outside border of where this ring is going to sit. And I've set my router to the right depth. And I'm going to route out a channel to hold that ring. It's going to be about half of the depth or half of the thickness of the soundboard. There we go. Okay, so now I will glue this in, and after it dries, I'll scrape it flush with the top of the guitar, what will be the top of the guitar, and then I'll use that same router setup to make smaller channels for the, uh, the contrasting purfling lines.
So now that the glue is dry on this ring, I'm going to use a scraper blade and scrape the whole ring flush with the surface of the soundboard. Okay, I'm almost there, so now I'm going to sand the last little bit so that I don't accidentally tear some of the grain in the spruce. Okay, that's it for now. Next, I want to make a series of black, white, and red lines to form rings around the, the center theme of the madrone. I have these sheets of veneer that I buy. They're, they've been dyed various colors. Here's a red one, and here's black, and the white one actually isn't dyed. It's a natural color of holly. But I'm going to slice up these sheets on my table saw and use those to form the lines that will go around the rosette ring. <laughs> Okay, so this will form the lines for the rosette when I stack these together and put them on end. You can see I've got a white, black, red, white line. So next I'm going to figure out how wide this is and route the channel around the madrone that this will fit snugly into. Okay, I think I've got this where I want it, so let's take a look. So I've got black, white, red, white, red lines, and they We'll press into this ring that I routed. Okay, so you can see where they go into the ring. It's going to look pretty nice. So now I'll do the same thing on the inside of the circle. And then I can uh, glue all these strips into place at the same time. Okay, so there's the... Uh, black, white, and red rings on the inside. It doesn't matter if the, the joint right here is perfect because the fretboard will cover that. I'm going to use a thin form of super glue to glue those um, wooden strips into the channels because regular wood glue has water in it and it, uh, it can swell up the wood just enough that the, the pieces don't fit anymore. So I find that super glue is a better choice for this. One of the downsides with super glue, though, is that because it's so thin, it penetrates into the spruce soundboard also, and it can be quite visible in the finished guitar. So to make that not be a problem, I'm going to first coat the channel with a thin layer of lacquer. And the lacquer will seal the end grain of the channel so none of the super glue can get through there. Okay, now I'll let that lacquer dry for a few minutes and then I can install the strips of veneer. Okay, the lacquer is dry in the, in the grooves there. I've got my fan running in the background because I don't want to get poisoned by these fumes. And now I'm going to start drizzling in the uh, really thin super glue. I can watch it soak right into all of these little strips of wood. 
and now I will just let this sit, let the glue dry, and once the glue dries, I will scrape and sand it all smooth, and I'll be done. Okay, the glue is all dry on those strips of wood, so now I'm going to plane and scrape and sand everything dead level, and then the sound hole ring will be done. Start with a plane. Okay, it's getting pretty close, so I don't want to risk gouging the soundboard with the plane, so I will finish off the smoothing out with a block of sandpaper. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Now if I want to get a quick glimpse of how this is going to look under the finish, I can wipe some naphtha on the surface. And this, this will give me a, a nice indication of how it's going to look in the completed guitar. Pretty great. Okay, so the last thing to do now is just cut out the hole for the, the sound hole. And I'm going to use that same router setup that I used for making these rings. Okay, there we go. Just sand up the fuzz and it'll be all set. So that's the completed sound hole ring. My next step will be to lay out the braces and start putting them on.